Following the Union defeat at Bull Run, General George McClellan was placed in command of the Union Army, which was now known as the Army of the Potomac. McClellan was given the responsibility of defending the Union capital of Washington, D.C., and destroying Confederate forces in Northern Virginia. General McClellan was an expert at training soldiers. Once he was placed in command, he spent months molding the Army of the Potomac into an effective fighting force. However, while the Army trained, it did not fight. McClellan was overly hesitant about attacking the Confederacy and resisted calls to invade the South. Instead, the Union Army sat idly by in camp and waited for action. Throughout 1862, Lincoln pushed McClellan to use the enormous army he had created to invade Virginia and capture the Confederate capital of Richmond. Lincoln proposed a direct assault on Richmond, which stood about 100 miles from Washington, D.C. Instead, McClellan ignored Lincoln and initiated what would become known as the Peninsular Campaign. In the first stage of this campaign, McClellan took his forces by ship down the coast of Virginia on the Chesapeake Bay. From there, Union forces landed on a peninsula between the James and York Rivers, just southeast of Richmond. From here, McClellan marched his army inland toward the capital, but never staged an assault on the city. For weeks, McClellan remained hesitant and refused to attack, unsure of the size and location of Confederate forces. McClellan's timidness allowed the rebels to solidify their defenses around Richmond, and devise a strategy to attack the Northern invaders. By now, General Robert E. Lee had taken command of the Confederate Army. Lee was the most accomplished military officer in the nation, and he had pledged to fight for the Confederacy when his home state of Virginia seceded from the Union. Lee now had the difficult responsibility of defending the Confederate capital of Richmond against vastly superior numbers. In late June 1862, Lee used his smaller army to relentlessly attack McClellan's forces in what became known as the Seven Days Battles. Knowing the risks needed to be taken to win with inferior numbers, Lee used his cavalry, under the command of Jeb Stuart, to ride around the Yankee forces. Stuart's cavalry harassed the Union forces with daring attacks from all sides. These bold and daring tactics gathered information on Union positions and boosted Southern morale. These attacks by the Confederate cavalry confused McClellan and his commanders and made it seem as though Confederate forces defending Richmond were larger than they actually were. Lee's risks and bold strategies paid off. Just one week after invading Virginia, all Union forces were driven back and McClellan abandoned his plans to capture Richmond. Having suffered over 20,000 casualties, McClellan was ordered to move his army north. Meanwhile, Lee devised a plan to move his forces north to threaten Washington, D.C. before the Union Army could regroup. 